Hey friends, I want to share with you today the get camera report commandlet in Milestone PS Tools. Uh, we're going to step through all of the columns in this report to give you an idea of what you can do with it and, uh, and then show you how to use it. So uh, let's start here. So we have our camera names. Uh, this report uh, pulls configuration information and status of um, all of the cameras in your Milestone VMS or uh, all of the cameras on a specific recording server on your Milestone VMS. So we have our camera name and the camera channel number, uh, which is useful if you have multi-channel devices, whether the device is enabled or not. And by default, it's only going to retrieve the enabled cameras. Um, you can choose to include disabled cameras in the report. And then we have the state. So whether the camera is responding, um, whether it is stopped, um, so it's not streaming right now. Um, if it's not licensed, it'll say so here. Or um, if there's a connect error, you'll see that indicated here in this uh, state column. We have our last modified timestamp and the GUID, the globally unique identifier representing that camera. Um, most of the time, you don't need to, to have that ID, uh, but in some cases, it can be useful. We have the hardware name. So in uh, a Milestone VMS, you have the hardware device, and then you have the camera devices attached to that hardware device, along with the outputs, inputs, uh, um, microphones, and speakers. So. Um, so this tells you which hardware device a particular camera channel is connected to, um, and then the hardware ID. And if we continue, we have the recorder name. And in this case, all the cameras are on one recording server. Um, but if you have a, a report with multiple recording servers, you'll be able to see the recorder friendly name, the display name, as well as the recording server's host name and the ID. And we continue, we have some of the hardware information for the device. We have the model um, and the driver. So uh, for example, this camera uh, is using the access one-click driver. And the model number that the camera has reported uh, under that driver is the P3228. And then we have the address, the username, the password column you'll notice is blank. Uh, you can include the passwords in the report with an optional parameter. Um, I haven't done that in this example. We have the camera MAC addresses. And then we move on to the stream configuration. So uh, we have two different sets of stream properties, the live stream and the recording stream. So if you are multi-streaming, this can be useful to, uh, to be able to see what the configured live and the default live stream is compared to the recording stream. Um, if you do not have multi-streaming enabled, you'll just see the same stream in, in both sides. Uh, and in this case, we do have a uh, 720p live stream and a 1080p recording stream. So it's useful to be able to uh, to look across all of your cameras and say, you know, for example, let's sort by resolution. And uh, if you're doing a report on a customer system, uh, this can help you to identify cameras that are are misconfigured or um, their their properties are just uh, not in line with the rest of your cameras. And then we have these columns, the actual live resolution and actual recording resolution. So because I included the include actual resolutions switch when I ran this report, the report actually requested a live image and a recorded image to uh, gather the resolution uh, of those images. So then you can compare. So for example, the highlighted column says the actual live resolution is 720 by 1280. And interestingly, the live resolution is configured for 1280 by 720. So that's interesting. I'll have to look into that. What camera is that? Is that a hallway camera? It looks like it's a hallway camera. Center shortcut. I think that's a, uh, a camera that's in a hallway. So it may be that it's tilted 90 degrees. Um, and so the configured resolution is 1280 by 720. But because the camera is on its end, uh, the reported resolution is 720 by 1280. 
Um, all right, moving on. So we have the actual live and recorded resolutions. Um, that is an optional parameter because it can take uh, a bit longer to generate the report if we need to retrieve images. Uh, we have whether recording is enabled or not. Uh, most of the time, you know, 99 out of 100 times, that's always going to be true. Um, but in some cases, you may have a, a camera that maybe uh, you're using interconnect and you just want to have access to live recordings and you want to play back video from the remote site. And so you don't want to do any recording centrally. And in those cases, you might have recording disabled. Uh, we have record keyframes only uh, and the pre-buffer settings. So this is a good way to spot a uh, discrepancy in the pre-buffer settings for, uh, for all your cameras. And then we have the storage that a particular device or a particular camera is assigned to. And the path. And let's keep going. We have the motion settings. And I think this is the last little section here. So um, whether motion detection is enabled or not, uh, whether we're doing motion detection on keyframes only, um, most of the time, it's tr no, that value is true. Uh, if it's false, that means that the recording server has to decode the entire group of pictures. Um, so we usually have one keyframe every second. And so every second is a group of pictures. And uh, if you have keyframes only disabled, then we have to calculate the motion detection for each of those frames in between the keyframes. And that can uh, increase the CPU usage on your recording server. So that's a common um, thing that our support team checks when somebody reports that their CPU usage is unusually high, is whether motion on keyframes only is enabled or disabled. And if it's disabled, there might be a good reason for it, but sometimes there's not. So um, then we have the detection method. And again, this can uh, dramatically affect performance. So by default, we, we only do motion detection on a small percentage of the pixels within the, uh, within the images we receive. Um, but if you set this to uh, full, then we're, we have to do uh, analysis on every pixel in the image, and that can increase CPU usage. So another good way to spot a configuration discrepancy there. And then we have our uh, whether manual sensitivity is enabled and whether motion metadata is enabled. You usually want to use motion metadata. It doesn't add too much overhead, and uh, that enables the smart search capabilities in Smart Client. And then we have the hardware acceleration properties. And finally, we have the oldest image and latest image UTC columns. So this is available to us because I included the include playback info switch when I ran the command to generate this report. And what this does is it asks the recording server for the most recent image or the latest image that's recorded, as well as the oldest image that's available for a camera and provides you with those timestamps. So this could be a good way if you sort um, sort ascending, you can see which cameras uh, have the oldest video and, uh, and if your retention isn't what it should be, then that could be something for you to look into. And then similarly with the latest image, UTC, if we sort descending, then we can see uh, if there's some cameras or let's sort ascending, we can see if there's some cameras that haven't recorded today uh, for one reason or another. And, uh, and then that gives us something else to look into. Okay, so let's see how to generate this report. I'm gonna go ahead and close the window that we're looking at. We're looking at the out grid view window that PowerShell gives us. Um, this is a easy way to look at a, uh, any report that you generate in PowerShell. Um, and I'll show you different ways to get this data out into um, different files, like a CSV file. So I'm connected to a management server right now. I'll disconnect just to show you the whole process here. And I'm just working in PowerShell ISE. If you want to open this for yourself, you can just go to start and type ISE, and it should be right there for you. Um, so I'm, I need to connect to a management server, and uh, I'm connecting to our public demo site. So connect, management server, just have an alias here for myself, public demo. And I'm going to ask 
uh, PowerShell to request my credentials to log in. And I have a basic user to log into the server. So I'll supply the basic user switch and I'll connect. And now I'm connected. Um, so I'm logged in. I could do get recording server and, uh, and then it'll retrieve information about the recording server for me, as an example. Um, so let's generate the report. Uh, it's as easy as just typing get camera report. And um, if I hit enter right now, it's going to gather information and I'm going to see it printing out into the PowerShell terminal. Um, now, this isn't a terribly useful way to look at a report um, because it's just dumping everything um, and it's and it's a bit difficult to search through. So I'm going to hit control C and we'll generate a new report, get camera report. And I'm going to pipe this uh, using that uh, that pipe symbol. I'm going to send that to the out grid view commandlet. And this is a built-in PowerShell command that lets you visualize the, the output of a command. Um, so I'll just run that. And you'll see it pops up a grid here. And it's it's starting to populate this with uh, with rows. And I didn't supply any additional switches. So I don't have, for example, the, the oldest and latest timestamps. Um, and it's missing the actual live and recording resolutions. But the report's a little bit faster to, uh, to generate here. Um, and the out grid view is useful if you're looking for something specific. You're not trying to generate a report to store for later or, or to, uh, to archive for uh, some purpose. Uh, you can add criteria here and look for you know, anything where the state is not equal to responding. And so that could be a good way to filter the results if you've got hundreds or thousands of cameras in a, in a report. Um, but if you want to get a CSV, let's show you how to generate a CSV. So we can do get camera report. And PowerShell provides us with a um, export CSV commandlet. And then we can supply a path. I'll do cameras.csv. And I usually use the no type information switch when I generate a CSV. Otherwise, it, it puts some extra header information that most of the time you don't need. So I'll use that. And I'll just run the report. And it'll take um, you know 30 seconds or so to generate. So this isn't something that you would probably run multiple times a day. Uh, this might be something that you start, um, you know, when you when you get on site or when you start your uh, a service that you're providing to a customer. Um, you could generate a camera report, and then uh, and then look through that when it's done, or maybe generate a report at the beginning and at the end of your session, so you can see what uh, what changes were made. Um, you might also consider generating a report you know, once a day or once a week and have those saved to, uh, to disk so that you can go back in time and look at what settings were um, at a specific point in time. And so we have our CSV file. So if I do, uh, I'll do notepad. And then I have my CSV file uh, right here. Uh, I can also open that in Excel. So invoke item, see demo cameras. And I've got my report in Excel. So if you have a lot of recording servers, you might want to run this report on one recording server at a time. You know, especially if there's uh, 100, 200 cameras per server, um, it can take some uh, some time to generate a report for for a couple thousand cameras. So, if you want to filter the report to a specific recording server, you could start with getting a list of recording servers. 
And let's just select their uh, their names for now. And because we only have one recording server, there it is. Um, I could do get recording server name milestone demo. And I can save that to a variable here. So recorder equals get recording server dash name milestone demo. And I should now have a recording server in this variable. So I can do get camera report recording server. And I can give it my variable there. And uh, let's include the actual resolutions. And let's output this to a CSV file. Or actually, let's do out grid view again. Out grid view. That way we can see it populating as it's going. And this way, you can generate that report on a smaller subset of those cameras. So that is get camera report. It is built in to Milestone PS tools, so it's an included command. Let's take a look at the version of PowerShell uh, or Milestone PS tools that I'm running. So get module. So right here. I have Milestone PS Tools 1.0.76, and it uses the MIP SDK redistributable version 20.1. So that is the version that I'm using, and it is called Get Camera Report. And there is uh, Get Help. Um, so if you use Get Help, Get Camera Report. With the full switch, you'll get information about that uh, that report. Um, so it gets a PS custom object with a bunch of properties um, and all of these switches, all of the parameters that are available for uh, for this commandlet are provided in the help information. And please let me know if um, if there's anything uh, that you find that's missing from the report, uh, something that would be useful to uh, to add to it. Uh, let me know, and I'd be happy to consider adding it. Thank you very much.